just did a live stream and I just cut off for three, like three minutes there. <laughs> I'm gonna delete it, I guess. <laughs> I think that, see, I like to go. I think this hairdo <laughs> will suit the tattoo now. Because it's kind of geisha esque. <laughs> I don't know, that's what's good about this. Because then you could, from somewhere you would normally never choose, you could put it there. Here, I don't know if people just like because I had my nipples in the last video. Here you go, you have that. You're like, I'm not, <laughs> won't even show their feet. He's like, I'm not just going to show you my body. And I was like, whoop, 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 whoop. Because no, <laughs> my girls are like, oh my God, these guys are catcalling me. I'm like, nobody does that to me. No one does that to me. So, so if I, if somebody, if somebody will look at me, I'll put on a show. Because I know I don't get that attention that everyone else gets for some reason. I don't like it. I'm hideous. So I don't. So, so I'll spin around and do whatever you want me to do. Because I haven't been jaded by some bad experiences with like. Pete. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Putting on a new floor in the bathroom for my grandma. There's been a hole in the floor, and for a long time, I was taking a shower, and my grandma was sitting downstairs, and water was leaking on her head. We always joked that the tubs were flying through the floor. I always would have fantasies or have uh, weird thoughts, even at home, which is funny because it's a. I, I've, like, I always thought I'd be sitting in the shower and then the tub and it's going to fall through the ceiling. Here, it literally could have happened if they wouldn't be fixing it now. But it, even at home, where it's not even possible, I always imagine it's when I'm in the tub that's going to shoot down into a sinkhole. <laughs> Do you? Does anyone else think weird things like that? I always imagine the tub falling into a sinkhole. I always imagine the house falling into a sinkhole. I only would feel that way at home, though. I ordered a new book called The Hole. It's gonna come today. I hope it's good. <gasps> oh no! See what I mean? These aren't very good qualities. Mm, it's kind of interesting. Oh. 
was kind of made the, the accident was kind of pretty it gives it shows what that effect would look like it's a happy accident let's take a look Hey, little birdie. See, I don't. I wouldn't choose this here. But I wanted to do cherry blossoms falling like right here. That's coming in. <sighs> I don't know if I have enough time, but maybe you'll try to fit in this video. I'm just gonna set, put you up to date on um, on a walk in the woods. I've kind of like slowed down on it a little bit, but I can, it helps me to pick it back up if I refresh. What's happened so far? It's not cute. <laughs> This is not cute. Excuse me. All right. We left off with cats and uh, Bill. They're gonna walk the Al Appalachian Trail. Bill is really out of shape. <laughs> He needs to eat donuts all the time. And <laughs> Bill's out of shape too. But, you know, at least he's, you know, he doesn't need to eat donuts all the time. <laughs> they start the trail. They start going, they're about to head off on the trail. And I, the, this is one of my favorite parts. I was laughing out loud. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it'll translate and be funny. It was, I found, now they're about to hit the trail. Or there's their first stop. Because they found cats in a dining room. <laughs> they stopped at a restaurant. In a dining room and he was looking laudably perky too. <laughs> this was because he had made a friend, a waitress named Rayette, who was attending attending to his dining requirements in a distinctly coquettish way. Rayette was six feet tall and had a face that would frighten a baby. <laughs> But she seemed good-natured and was diligent with the coffee. She could not have s signaled her availability to cats more clearly if she had thrown her skirt up over her head and lain across his hungry man breakfast platter. Cats, in consequence, was pumping testosterone. Ooh, ooh I like a man who appreciates pancakes, Riet Coot. Well, honey, I sure appreciate these pancakes. Cat cats responded. <laughs> I just love a, a, a scary, tall waitress that's acting cute. <laughs> and, will, and him all excited, like he, lo he loves it. He, lo <laughs> he loves it. That's, oh, I love I love that scene. Sounding cute. A face agleam with syrup and early morning happiness. It wasn't exactly Hepburn and Tracy. But it was strangely touching, nonetheless. Cat, cats watched her go with something like paternal pride. She's pretty ugly, isn't she? <laughs> he said with a big, big, incongruous beam. <laughs> He's beaming, saying she's pretty ugly. <laughs> Yeah, 
You know what I look for in a female these days? A heartbeat and a full set of limbs. I'm prepared to compromise on the limbs. Do you think she's available? I believe you'll have to take a number. And then he gets depressed and he leaves. I was like... <laughs> What do you mean? She wants you. Look at how that guy gypped him out of being with that woman. She was into it. The heart is... <laughs> and on the trail, uh, I just thought that was a cute scene. <laughs> I like these pancakes. <laughs> the hardest part was coming to turn with the, they're on the trail, I, uh, did you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hike, because the hardest part to come in terms with the constant dis dispiriting discovery that there is always more hill. And each time you haul yourself up to what you think must surely be a crest, you find that there is in fact more hill beyond. <laughs> like, that does not sound good. These are the things that I like. I'm like, Sounds off. <laughs> then, and and Cat, he's throwing a bunch of food out of his pack. He's throwing food out of his pack. He's throwing everything out because it's too heavy. So he's throwing all the, everything he brought into the forest. Remember, he packed lots of food and donuts and stuff. <laughs> I'll just read the funny parts because I don't think I have enough room. <sighs> Maybe I'll have to do the rest later again. Oh, I like this scene. It's talking about how the forest is, how it's. Uh, the woods are not like other spaces to begin with. They are cubic there are trees surround you they loom over you press in from all sides woods choke off views and leave you muddled and without bearings they make you feel small and confused and vulnerable like a small child lost in a crowd of strange legs he goes so woods are spooky he goes this what this wasn't the tame world of overgrown orchards and sun-dappled paths that passed for wilderness in suburban Concord, Massachusetts, but a forbidding, oppressive, prime primeval country that was grim and wild and savage and dreary, fit only for men. Daniel Boone, who not only wrestled bears but tried to date their sisters, described corners of the southern Appalachians as so wild and horrid that it is impossible to behold them without terror. Isn't that cool? I love <laughs> how uh, exciting and scary. Most of the force is gone now, but what survives is more impressive than you might expect. The Chattahoochee is part, Chattahoo is part of 4 million acres, 6,000 square miles of federally owned forest, stretching up to the Great Smoky Mountains. This is a very interesting book because I didn't even really know about any of this. I don't know, somehow I just, because I live on the opposite, opposite side of the country, so I don't really know about the Appalachian Trail. So we really learned a lot with this. I'd like to see the Smoky Mountains. There's a lot of talk about how how the, they're, everybody's cutting down the forest and that's really sad. I don't like that. There's plenty of, of land with nothing on it. Why don't cut down the forest? Try real hard not to do that. Cause it's, look, it's a magical, spooky place. There's tons of land with nothing on it. Don't cut down the cool forest. The cool spooky forest. We need it. <laughs> it's cool. Look at that. There, there it's still when it goes. There's a strange, I, I sorry, strange frozen violence in a forest out of season. <laughs> Every glade and dale seemed to have just completed some massive 
cataclysm. Down trees lay across the, the path every 50 or 60 yards. Often with great bomb craters of dirt around their splayed roots, dozens more lay rotting on the slopes, and every third or fourth tree it seemed was leaning steeply on a neighbor. It was as if the trees couldn't wait to fall over, as if their sole purpose in the universe scheme of things was to grow big enough to topple with a really good splintering crash. I love the, a strange frozen violence. Man, I just a, 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 a frozen land of trees are all splintered and falling on each other. That's just so different than what you see here. Alright, I don't know if it's going to save this, so I'm going to stop there, I guess. I'll read more in another video. Be back shortly. Love you.